saw her face. The way development has been going in, in uh, Cape Ann, it's very important to document streams and vernal ponds. And Rick has been working for several years with a good group to document vernal ponds and educate people on the environment. Um, anything you'd like to say, Rick? Yeah, well, we have been around since 1990, and um, we're a small but dedicated group. Uh, our goals are vernal pond education and conservation. And um, we've created some awareness in a few different ways, we've created a couple of posters and a video. Wetlands provide living things a place to live, grow, and reproduce. One significant type of wetland is the vernal pond, also known as vernal pool or spring pool. Vernal ponds are extremely important wildlife habitat. They act as energy recycling centers that allow nutrients to return to the forest ecosystem. Small, shallow, fresh water. Vernal ponds are filled with rainfall and snowmelt. These ponds usually dry up in the summer. Because they are temporary, they are fishless, which gives them a unique ecology. Vernal pond activity signals the beginning of spring. During the first warm, rainy nights of late March and early April, spotted salamanders emerge from their winter homes and move to vernal ponds to breed, sometimes traveling as much as a quarter mile. Because vernal ponds have no fish, these amphibians, their eggs, and larvae are safe from fish predation. Spotted salamanders are required or obligated to breed in vernal ponds. They can breed nowhere else. They are obligate species. This is the breeding activity of the spotted salamander. Males deposit small white packets of sperm onto sunken leaves. These spermatophores look like breadcrumbs at the bottom of the pool. The female walks over the spermatophore, picking it up with her cloaca and opening at the base of the tail. In this way, the eggs are fertilized. After a day or two, she will attach her eggs to a submerged branch or twig. Round embryos indicate that this egg mass is in an early stage of development. Nearly ready to hatch, these embryos are moving inside the egg. In four to eight weeks, they will emerge from the egg mass. Spotted salamanders spend their larval stage underwater, breathing through feathery gills on their necks. By summer, when ponds are nearly dry, the larvae change or metamorphose. Now, with fully developed lungs, this new adult, only two inches long, is ready to leave the pond and make its home in the forest. The quacking sound of the male wood frog, also an obligate species, attracts a female for breeding in early spring. The male crawls onto the female's back and fertilizes the eggs as she lays them. These are wood frog egg masses. Totally dependent on vernal ponds, the aquatic fairy shrimp is an obligate species. 
These back swimming crustaceans grow to an inch and a half in length. They are an important food source for larger animals in the pond. Before the pond dries, those fairy shrimp that survive predation will lay their eggs. When the pool fills again, the eggs will hatch. Obligate species, spotted salamanders, wood frogs, and fairy shrimp are required to spend all or part of their life cycle in vernal ponds. Many other kinds of animals and plants, though not obligated, make use of vernal pond habitat. Buttonbush is common in vernal ponds. The sweet blossoms are the favorites of butterflies and other insects. Arrowhead, also known as duck potato, produces starchy tubers eaten by ducks and muskrats. Blue flag. High bush blueberry, flower, and fruit. Meadowsweet. St. John's wort. Swamp loose strife. Sweet pepper bush. Swamp rose. Winterberry. Swamp candle. While not restricted to vernal ponds, many kinds of animals live, breed, and eat in them. Microscopic creatures feed on plants and decaying leaf litter, and each other. Copepods are among the many kinds of animal life which become food for larger animals in the pond. <laughs>